Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let's let's jump into it because I know you don't have too much time and I'm, we're, all, yeah. we're all busy uh -huh. here. But um, yeah, so thanks for coming on the podcast, and I'm excited to get started. Let's uh, yeah, let's let's talk about some stories. Let's uh, maybe jump in. Do you have uh, one off the top you want to talk about? Actually, let's start the podcast off with your favorite hot drink. The most important question. Think of it like as not your daily hot drink, but that hot drink that it's like. It's been a rough day and I need this one. Yeah, I love uh, a, a really sweet cocoa and I put a mint tea bag in it. Ah. That's kind of my uh, treat myself, especially with some nighttime self-care. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I uh -huh. love it. Yeah, I tried that. Yeah. I tried that a few times. I remember uh, one instructor got me onto that. I'm a cocoa yeah. guy myself. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, I'll bring I'll bring extra. Uh, yeah. Another instructor. Uh, Lloyd Stetson, he just goes out and buys, brings a few more pounds of cocoa. And, <laughs> and I'm on the Lloyd School of Cocoa Drinking now. Yeah. And then uh, certainly Patagonia, when I was uh, there for 15, mm. I think 15, 13, 14, 15 seasons, you, wild mint grows all over the place if you're anywhere by an mm. old ranch, a, a campo. And I would just collect mint and just go to bed oh, with, a, with a, a mint tea. Oh, and nice. I had some severe dental stuff or lots of cavities. And the dentist was reviewing with me what, ha what he discussed, you know, your nighttime thing with brushing your teeth. It's like, well, you know, I brush my teeth and then I'd go to bed with a, uh, you know, just because it's so cold and wet down there, I'd go to bed with a liter in my bag and I'd drink my hot tea while I read a book before I slept. And he went, well, it's got sugar in it. You're not brushing your teeth after the, the the sugary hot drink i said no doesn't so he said well cut that on and you'll probably be fine right. <laughs> yeah yeah good mm -hmm. thing hot drinks would come back to bite you but uh <laughs> yeah yeah well down there uh you, everything you can to to stay warm and that uh it's like a thermos and a hot drink at the same time that's what i love to do down there Absolutely. Well, let's yeah. uh, let's dive into some stories from the Amazon. I know Knowles had an operation down there for about four or five years. Was it? Yeah, I what, what, Yeah, it was a uh, six or seven. Yeah, yeah. was that? Mine? And I, yeah, I missed uh, one year in that uh, time. It was a project just uh, started between friends. Uh, yeah. uh, Attila and I did a, a private trip there and decided that uh, let's do a more serious expedition and see if we could run trips from that. So we invited some. Uh, some other friends and we did that trip that was on uh, the Roosevelt River uh, named after Theodore Roosevelt who did the first descent oh really uh, yeah uh, 70 something years later we did the second descent no way yeah wow. 70 years and their expedition it took uh, over a year this was after he was president but the okay. uh, Brazil government uh pulled this uh this uh i think he was a major in the army famous man uh putting in lots of the roads and telegraphs in the in remote areas his name was hondon or rondon and there's a state named after him but he was the main guy on the expedition and they put him there in charge of uh roosevelt to make sure he came back alive mm -hmm. and they that trip they uh can you hear me okay with yep. the that's perfect. Yep. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's a little echo on my end, but, um, um, they lost, uh, four people on that, uh, on that expedition over a year long. Wow. The, all their canoes were made out of big trees hollowed out with fire. And then, um, with an ax, you take out the mm -hmm. center of the tree. Um, uh, yeah, big river, that one, the Roosevelt. And it took us, uh, four weeks to do not not a year as the right. first one yeah and from that we just decided uh and what were you paddling uh, were you paddling our standard canoes no well uh, the ones we use sometimes in other places we had uh in the the brazil sorry the amazon uh, sorry australia program right. and alaska the brooks range we we have these boats called alley packs they're a uh, bergens right. of norway company you mm -hmm. uh it's a skin frame and aluminum or a right. skin skin boat with an aluminum frame okay yeah they're very good and uh we'd you, they they fold down into a duffel bag so they're right. perfect for putting on a truck to 
go on the trans Amazonica highway and things like that. So right. uh, you then end up buying hot, you using about a hundred zip ties per boat and you can just zip all the frames up to make them rigid, like a, okay. a hard canoe. Yeah. And they, they work uh, really well. Uh, a lot of patching materials, but uh, right. the river we was on, uh, we were on uh, there is called the Jirwena. It flows into the Tapajos and the Tapajos is the fifth biggest Amazon tributary. Wow. And the, the section, the river, the Jirwena runs uh, south to north in the exact center of South America. Uh, you know, you could measure east coast to west coast and it's exactly in the center, mm. right in the middle of the Amazon. How Wild, far are you from the equator? Uh, we don't cross it, but we're yeah, within five, five, yeah, five degrees of it right. or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, called the, called the Juduena and it's a national park. They've got some problems there now trying to put dams on it. We'll see what the mm. um, government uh, that comes in power uh, next does with that. Right. So what kind of wildlife encounters did you have down there? On, well, on uh, the that main story you asked me about yeah. it and, uh, uh, is, uh, you know, the, the biggest event, really one of the biggest events in my life right now is coming uh, face to face with uh, a jaguar, you know, kind of uh, trying to have them not attack me and eat me yeah so that yeah, uh, happened? happened on yeah that happened on a course um i think the third year i was i was there um you, should i go into that story yeah yeah let's dive yeah, into yeah, it yeah yeah uh just um yeah big event um with this river uh, the we're, we're uh, doing 45 day canoe trips they're totally self-supported uh you know you set up the boats you start on the river and you teach people you build skills slowly and uh, before long you're running more things than lining or carrying and there's some really big rapids on the river they're must port portage rivers um, are you getting resupplied on a, on a 45 day trip down there no no everything with wow. it totally totally self-supported yeah fully loaded yeah. at the beginning yeah 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 they're big and we big barrels uh mm. waterproof semi-waterproof uh, yeah. If you go for a long swim, the barrels can get a bunch of water in them. But, right. uh, uh, you know, it worked good for us. Um, uh, just clinicking, building skills, and um, uh, negotiating these really big rapid start. The, you know, the let's say uh, May to June uh, on the Colorado River would be similar volume. Oh, it's wow. a big, it's a big river mm -hmm. uh and the, sometimes there's channels uh, sometimes you run right down the, the tongue of it uh, yeah it makes you paddle defensively it's it's really big uh mm -hmm. with caimans anacondas uh electric really? eels in the river uh no big catfish that are 300 pounds wow uh, yeah just incredible stuff going on in the river and piranhas of course you're fishing for piranha are you swimming in, uh, in these rivers yeah 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 the greatest thing that gets some people is you can be uh standing in the water in your shorts fishing for piranha right yeah so that's because, you're, right? because you're because the, the all the stories of these things just circling and devouring it actually has to do with uh blood and if you've got mm. wounds yeah and probably a bit of hollywood yeah for sure <laughs> sure yeah 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 and so anyway, this uh, river, one of the big uh, San Florencio rapid uh, that we had to negotiate. Uh, now I think back on it and I realize that we, you know, it is just an amazing place because there's so many dead animals everywhere, all sorts of uh, Amazon deer and antelope and monkeys and just so, and uh, these two types of peccaries. They're like a javeline, wild pig. Mm. And uh, all these uh, skeletons all over the place. And only after this encounter did I realize, well, of course, this is this jaguar's territory. Oh. And it's its hunting ground. And uh, in between one year and another, uh, the river would come up so high that it would wash all those mm. carcasses away. But um, 
So are you seeing these carcasses over a couple of days or at a camp at a particular camp or just as, as you were paddling? When at or at a camp where you're carrying loads back and forth. So this was probably a three quarter of a mile portage. Okay. I mean, we're talking really big rivers, so really big, sometimes really big portages. Yeah. And um, the, all the barrels that are really uncomfortable, you you can't really carry that by yourself. So they've got handles on them and you're shuttling loads back and forth. And uh, just a really good place for natural history to walk along mm. and see all of these uh, things on the, on the, uh, it's like a rock shelf. Okay. Kind of port I was going to say, are you, are you bushwhacking here? Or are you, you, is there sometimes, trails? Or? Yeah, sometimes. But it's probably uh, not too many trails in, in that deep. Well, no, no, there's nobody in this area whatsoever. Um, you uh, generally send every year could be different based on the flood, flood waters. And uh, you send a party down to uh, scout your uh, portage route and then flag it with uh, mm. uh, usually throw bags or something. Um, right. And then uh, group up at the other end. And sometimes it takes a day or two to do the portage with uh, all the gear and the distance. Wow. But uh, this place, San Florencio Rapid, was it's uh, such a beautiful camp, to and uh, with all of these uh, things to to see. Um, and it, we, I would never that rapid. We'd never think of running it. It's just really big, mm -hmm. so it's a must. There's what five must portage okay. rapids on the river. And uh, excuse me, I'm not saying portage. It's, uh, I know. Uh, I'm you, a, you've become Americanized now. You've lost I have, your Canadian I have, slang. I have. Well, when I do that, people say, what's that? I know. I so now that. I just say portage. Yeah. 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 And uh, so anyway, uh, this uh, we, we portaged everything across, set up our, uh, our camp, and I had a day, layover day there. Had some great things, uh, clinicking in, in uh, areas that uh, were safe with the, the canoes and uh, just went for natural history walks and re kind of got some good rest. And then the next day we packed everything up. We were ready to go. And we had a diabetic student on that course and he had a hypoglycemic event right before we were leaving. Oh no! So it's like, well, we need to get uh, some sugar in, in, in this fellow. And um, he stayed with two students by the canoes and, everyone else was had you know sarah harvey yeah 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 Sarah's yeah she was on that trip her, her oh, okay. first and only trip yeah. down there and she's a really uh uh talented and enthusiastic yoga person so she found mm -hmm. these really nice uh rock benches and she took the group over there uh to do some yoga while this guy was uh, recuperating getting some sugar in him and once he was kind of stable and everything was relaxed that's like well i need to just be uh getting getting a jump on the day so um there's a, another rapid we had to do right after that it was part of the main San Florencia uh uh rapid so but uh it was just a little part that we could run so I walked maybe a hundred meters down to check this uh this rapid out and it I I got sort of the plan of how we were going to manage that and then I just looked into the forest, just admiring everything. And I saw this amazing tree growing out of flat rock, out of a crack. And the tree had to be 50, 60 feet high. But it was no, no, no soil whatsoever. It was just growing out of a rock. And such a beautiful tree. And I just, it's like, well, I got to go check that thing out. And I walked another 50 meters past this rapid. And I'm looking at this tree and uh, I'm 10 feet away from it. And I look into the forest. 10 meters away and under this tree in the sh another tree in the shade right at the start of the forest uh, is this jaguar uh, lying down on its uh, front kind of paws legs looking at me, no licking its lips and uh moving its tail like a snake like a cobra and was it camouflaged the, really well or how, how did well, you spot it this thing this jaguar was bright red red wow and it's this uh, intermediate stage between uh melanistic forms of 
uh, a regular normal jaguar that we know and a, a black jaguar. Hmm. Um, the ones that are deep in the, the Amazon. And, and I don't think they change from white to black from what I read. Uh, it's just forms of it that are inherited. And this one is uh, sort of in between the, the two. It's a, it's a reddish color, just beautiful. So the first thing that came in my mind is what an amazing animal this thing is huge too these oh, yeah. things are as big as we are they're 100 yeah. kilos oh, man. and they can be two and a half meters long wow. if you add their their tail so they're a big they're the third biggest cat after the tiger and the really? african lion yeah they probably got 50 kilos on a cougar right wow. yeah and um and that's their habitat, right? They're uh, mm. they're there for uh, any th- sort of uh, ground mammal. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, anything. There's all sorts of little things from squirrels to agoutis to peccaries to uh, different uh, Amazon deer that they eat. But uh, this thing was just it wasn't looking particularly threatening. Mm. It was just under a tree, but it only had eyes for me. Right. And this was probably its standard uh, traditional uh, wait for prey and surprise them. Right. Uh, sight just sitting there, beautiful spot. I walked there later and, and saw it, and it's like a perfect living room, you know. Right. Um, Did you have uh, any Jaguar protocol kind of in the risk management plan going into this trip, you know, like we have bears for Alaska or Yukon, things like that, uh, or is there no, anything you no. can do? No, no. Well, okay. you normally tr- go everywhere you say in, in pairs, Oops, but yeah. you know, people go off to the bathroom at that time. They went by themselves uh, close to camp and you could uh, actually walk 10 feet away and, uh, and do a cat hole. And uh, in a week you're, poop probably wouldn't be there that the the soil in that area was so rich even though amazon soil in particular isn't that rich but any places we checked out uh was just uh really good for that um but um uh yeah this jaguar just was intent on staring at me and uh after the initial wow beautiful it's like wow i'm here i've got nothing on with except shorts it's uh, already at 8 a.m it's um uh, 32 degrees wow. celsius now, are, yeah, are, they and, not, are they typically nocturnal or do they uh are they hunter in the day uh both yeah, yeah. they can okay. be all over the place yeah uh oftentimes night but uh, certainly day yeah. um and um yeah we didn't have any really protocols at that time since then, yeah, we have uh, <laughs> everyone carries a whistle. Okay. Uh, and uh, everything in pairs. You can't really get bear spray in Brazil or bring it to Brazil. So that's kind okay. of mixed. But uh, right there, normally the bugs are so bad too, but it was right before the, right after the kind of small little black flies called bojachudos. It's, mm. it's like a in uh, Mexico, it would be a hihene. It's like a midge, tiny okay. little uh, thing. And, and they're dawn sort of species. So uh, when the sun's out, they kind of go away. But I, I, uh, I didn't have a shirt on. I had sandals uh, and shorts. And then that, my second thought after the beauty of this thing is like, oh, I am not. And I'm screwed right here. Uh, I'm uh, away from camp. People kind of a few people know where I am. Uh, no knife on me. And I thought, well, what are my options? I just, I knew from reading and we prep students before, if you ever come across a Jaguar like that, what you don't want, just like a cougar, you do not want to act like prey. You want to stare at it, stand your ground. If you run away, you'll, uh, it'll probably chase you. So we, uh, we had, um, those were the protocols. It's just, just, uh, yell loud. Um, and so that's what I did, uh, when it actually, I didn't first, I just stood there, uh, uh, thinking about my options. I could have climbed the tree. Mm-hmm. I thought of that, uh, this is all probably in like 
five seconds, but it right. seems like I'm d- deliberating for 15 minutes. But uh, it's like, no, the tree's not good because uh, jaguars are great climbers. And I was at that point, like 30 feet from the river's edge. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I could get in the water, but jaguars are great swimmers. And uh, those are the two options. It's like, well, I can run, but the jaguar will right. catch me right away. And <laughs> I'm not, not going to be prey. Uh, certainly act like it. So uh, I just stared at this thing and the stare went on for a long, long time. It seems to me uh, now I was staring at that thing for half an hour, but you know, realistically it was probably three to five minutes of just staring at that thing. But I had time to think of these things and going, well, what's going on? Can I throw something or use something as a weapon? Uh, And um I just let my Are you my talking eyes, to it? Or are you backing up? Or you're just, at, you're just standing point, and no. staring? I just, yeah, I was just uh, Frozen. doing some thinking. And the first thing that came in mind is like, you need something in your hands um, uh, to defend yourself. And I just glanced for a second. The moment I took my eyes off, that thing stood up and then walked 10 feet toward me. And at that point, there was 30 feet between us and he's already covered 10 and i just screamed stop as no loud way. as i could like incredibly loud and that was followed by i will not die really really loud <laughs> was it was that calculated or was do you think that was a bit of fright or flight um going on in your head there just a reaction yeah, I was like getting ready to defend myself and letting right. that thing know that it uh, wouldn't be uh, easy. Yeah. I wasn't backing down, running away. Um, uh, but it stopped and it stood there and it went a little left and right. Just And I just stayed where I was. Um, I glanced down there uh, the first time I just saw it move and I looked back up at him and yelled, but then I glanced back down and there's almost no trash on this river because it's so big and unpopulated. But I saw 10 feet away, a whiskey bottle huh. empty. And uh, I just uh, moved over to the side a little and without leaving my eyes off, letting the eyes go off that uh, Jaguar. I picked this bottle up and I thought, well, I need to think, ding that thing right in the forehead. And it, I didn't. I missed it by like a, a foot. No. So you threw yeah, the whole yeah. bottle. Yeah. I threw that whole thing oh, at, with a real, I, not really hard, but with enough trying to accuracy and oomph right. <laughs> so that I would uh, definitely do the trick but I, I didn't hit it. And uh, the sand kind of splashed up on it and it kind of uh, jumped a, a little hop out of the way. And then I just started yelling again, I will not die. And any expletive I could uh, uh, think of, sure. uh, just yelling like uh, mad. Uh, it went left and I went right. And it went right, and I went left, and we did this little dance, like in a, almost a circle. Is it like it's, it's moving left and moving right, or its head is bobbing? No, no, it's moving. Oh, wow. It was trying to come around behind me, and I ah. like, uh, so we ended up doing no like way. this uh, slow dance one way and the other on this rock right <laughs> by this big tree. And I guess I could have grabbed the tree, but there was no branch I could break off or anything. Uh, I then just uh, my peripheral vision found a saw a, a palm frond. This thing probably weighed a pound, a half kilo. And I pulled that thing up. It was like three and a half feet, four feet long. And that was like my little spear thing. And I thought, well, it's not going to know it's soft. So I, I like was waving this thing around and uh, just yelling. And it went right. And I went uh, left. So the, the uh, group is too far away and the river's too loud for them to hear you yelling? Yeah, yeah, definitely okay. a roar of the river. And yeah. most people were off uh, even further at this yoga right. slick rock. Uh, it was only these two or three students. Yeah. Um, and uh, But I was 
I was like, well, chances are they're going to hear me. I'm yelling pretty loud. Um, but it, it still, it could have been uh, river noise stopping them or they're in a conversation. You don't hear that kind of stuff. But uh, really, I wasn't focusing on what can, uh, can right. I'm heard. I'm like right in with this Jaguar right here. Uh, I that was probably another three minutes of doing this little dance back and forth. And uh, uh, at two different times, it like uh, started to come toward me and with its uh, head down, kind of getting ready, uh, like moving its arms coming toward me, head down like it was going to ready to jump or start accelerating fast. And I would do false charge, like three feet, waving my hand, screaming. And then it, it stopped that and then started to try to come around behind me. And, and I would just not let it do that. Just essentially always facing the, the, the Jaguar. I saw a rock. It was probably as big as my palm. And I tried again to throw and beam that thing in the head. And uh, I missed it again. Oh, but no. more sand got in its eyes. And I, I think any predator, you just have your eyes are everything, right? Yeah. If you're a blind predator, you're not good for anything or any sort of eye irritation. So hypersensitive when that sand came up in its face. And I did this other false charge and uh, uh, run and toward it for five feet and it backed off a, a little bit uh giving some more space uh i can't to believe us. you were charging <laughs> that's crazy you're charging well, not jaguar. full not certainly not full charge but right, uh right. letting them know that i yeah. was ready for a, a fight yeah and I, I i really think an animal like that chances are it doesn't have a lot of uh you, yeah things that. that it's trying to predate on right uh give it resistance most things will run away like a deer <coughs> um and uh if two jaguars i've seen a video two jaguars uh coming uh meeting each other there's a there's some screaming happening then too wow like a yeah like roar and yeah. i've seen it where certainly working in in kenya lions do that uh, sure. uh just letting each other know so it's like the uh, secondary thing. Yeah. Has the Jaguar uh, made any noise at this point at all? No, none. Totally mm -hmm. silent. Totally silent. Um, it's that interesting. It's like a, a blur as far as my, um, my memory of, uh, my sense of how much time passed, mm. but somewhere, uh, right after these false charges and it backed up a little, um, false charges that I did, uh, it, um, I just heard somebody calling me, mm. uh, and I look off and at maybe 50 meters away or something, there's a student coming through the bush saying, what are you yelling at? <laughs> and, uh, and I said, <laughs> a Jaguar is here. And, uh, this guy, his name's Ryan. <coughs> he, um, he comes out of the bush. And he sees this jaguar and this uh, jaguar almost on cue turns his whole body sideways. So you can see the whole jaguar in its sideways profile silhouette right. and just, you know, just uh, tail up in the air, uh, looking such a, a strong and healthy animal. And uh, this jaguar just uh, looked at, the student Ryan and me and just kind of walked slowly, uh, not away from us, but sideways and into the forest and then just disappeared. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's nerve wracking that, you know, your, your student got there and, and was like, wow, potentially in harm's way. But at the same time, it's like, I'm glad someone else saw this. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. So the, otherwise the hard to believe the, the, I had the, you know, um, 
the aftermath was yeah. uh yeah so was, uh, did you like uh, sprint back to camp and say let's load the canoes get out of here oh yeah 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 and i was like amped for days yeah and i i lost my voice for five days too like uh uh wow. just because i was yelling so loud yeah. uh i just lost my voice from all that yelling wow mm -hmm. this amazing. interesting to this student uh a few weeks before uh i helped him uh uh pick up uh his pack and um at a portage and he said no no i'll do it and i said no no let me do it he goes no no i'll do it and it's like why are you worried about uh, me picking up your pack and i picked up his pack and i heard a squishing sound it's like well, no so what's going on he said i'm making sake <laughs> <laughs> and so he boiled rice added sugar and fruit crystals and he's making an alcoholic drink drink in the field Oh, and this man. is the student that we went back and forth. Well, write this down, what happened, and then uh, will you do it again, etc. Oh, we went back and forth going, it, uh, is it uh, against uh, school policy to yeah, make right. sake or to drink sake? <laughs> and we caught him before that, right? But he was making several liters of this rice wine. No way. And uh, yeah, yeah. I've never heard and, of anybody doing that. That's funny. Oh, uh, yeah. Believe me. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just. Uh, uh, there's yeah, little they haven't tried. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, if there's a will, there's a, you'll find a way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, we decided not. He was very uh, repentant and uh, said he'll be a good boy after that. And uh, we had, you know, every few days we checked in with them and, and uh, uh, rather, and it would be really hard to evacuate someone off that river. And really, uh, if we did, it'd be really expensive. So for, sure. uh, yeah, we didn't, but uh, could would be hard to imagine uh, doing it with, uh, for something that wasn't a real emergency. Anyway, this was the student that uh, came to my rescue. Uh, wow. Uh, with I'm the, sure your, with your relationship Jaguar. changed a little bit after that experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we had some good bonding. It's like, wow, yeah. thanks very much for uh, interjecting right there. Yeah. Just wow. a beautiful view of this Jaguar walking into the forest. Since that time, um, I have this great, one of my favorite uh, hot drink cup that I would use to drink it out of was uh, then one of the years after that doing this rapid, I found this really old, manky, gross plastic mug at the exact place that I had this oh, no Jaguar way. encounter. So I cleaned that thing up and I have it on my sailboat. No uh, way. Now, yeah, yeah, I keep it with me. Uh -huh. That's a good moment. Yeah, just as a little uh, keepsake from that uh, strong moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, our, yeah. our time left, let, let's just stay on the Amazon theme. And I know you've got some other mm -hmm. stories from that area. Like tell me about some people encounters that you had uh, on those trips. Oh, good question. Because the story is really not over. I, okay. You know, we're, we're like 45 days that, that right. trip. Right. And yeah. uh, toward the end of the uh, trip, you're, you're uh, starting to see some really uh, outlying uh ranches that people are trying to make okay. a living and there's this guy that we ran into one year uh, uh previous to that his he's a legendary figure in the the amazon his name is severino Cuello, and uh, he's got to be 70 or that time he was 70 and uh he's he spent 50 years of his life in the in the amazon making a a ranch on the side of the river with the uh, uh, boy, he's you know, like, he's got goats. Maybe he's got a cow or two, but all sorts of fruit trees. Hmm. Uh, he's grown vegetables in a fenced area. Uh, he's got 12 grandkids and six kids, his wife. So he's there himself. Now his wife died and as a family all moved into cities somewhere. So he's there by himself most of the time sometimes grandkids spend some time with them but um he's just stayed he loves it there he fishes uh, 
And I knew him from the years before. And when I got there, I just was really excited to tell him about it. Mm. Uh, I was like, Seven, you know, I almost uh, uh, got attacked by a jaguar. And he said, Jim, wait there. And he undid his shirt. And he said, I also know the jaguar. And there was a scar on his chest. No way. From his, yeah. And in fact, the main, I can't remember the name of the uh, principal uh, television cha- channel news station in Brazil. Uh, Telemundo maybe, but uh, they helicoptered a crew of people to film him when he got uh, attacked by a, a jaguar. And oh. he was with his a few dogs that killed his dogs and it came up to him and it, it didn't really jump on him, but it actually put his paws up on him to press him down and he grabbed the paws of the jaguar in this little dance and then the jaguar ripped his uh his chest and i and the jaguar then i think that a dog attacked and the jaguar went away but he he fought this jaguar off hand to hand (laughs) and this is like a 70 year old a few years before that this uh, that this happened but the thing is is this fellow is so welcoming and we spent so much we camped in his yard he gives us tours he never did mention this to us voluntarily. Mm. It was only after I said the Jaguar thing that he said, oh, yeah, this thing happened to me years ago. Uh, wow. Yeah. And he now always carries a rifle. And if he ever sees a Jaguar or he hears about a Jaguar, he will go off uh, to shoot the Jaguar. Wow. And I don't think he's ever killed one but that's his main thing it's like oh yeah i'll uh, definitely it's these uh i think anywhere you go these uh human animal encounters the more you take these uh take the jungle away and uh there's this population pressure or range overlap you'll have more of those things and Mm -hmm. uh certainly people will want to kill the jaguars and the jaguar will want to kill either people or livestock Livestock, which is uh really common Mm -hmm. we're getting the garbages yeah this one uh, trip that uh attila and i did our first scouting trip in a a big swamp it's like uh it takes in part of paraguay brazil and uh bolivia it's called the pantanal huge i mean a few years ago i'd got a bunch of uh press because the whole thing because of climate change the whole Mm -hmm. thing burned down oh wow um certainly the amazon has had lots of uh big fires since Mm -hmm. we've been uh running trips there but um um in that uh uh, trip down a river in the 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 pantanal just attila and i in the an alipac canoe we came across uh a recent kill of a big uh caiman uh species of alligator uh this thing had to be 12 feet long and uh, really uh, the the jaguar uh, had caught and eaten that there was prints very recent too there's still jaguar prints all around the mud and where it had attacked this uh caiman wow so Mm -hmm. jaguar prints were were fairly common that you would see on the shorelines or sure yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so you you knew they were out there yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of amazing uh, cats. There's a margay and there's a ocelot and a oncia. Hmm. Uh, just uh, one cat is exactly the same size as a house cat. It's like a uh, golden brown. Just a uh, t- t- total tree or arboreal. Just mm-hmm. we saw it up in the 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 trees. Just a uh, beautiful cat so it really uh, a lot healthy species of uh of uh he- healthy population of ma- lots of diversity with cats um uh, in the amazon hmm. did you see any alligator crocodiles on on your trips were, were they a oh yeah 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 mm-hmm. well not a concern uh uh not a concern that they would stalk us those i think that's the 
estuarian or salty crocodile or mm. the Nile crocodile, which uh, these ones here, it's possible. Uh, and I'm not sure I know of any, uh, or certainly recently in Mexico this last year, there was a five-year-old uh, kid in San, right outside of San Blas in mm. uh, Mexico in the state of Nayarit uh, uh, came and came out of the water and grabbed that uh, kid, wow. small child. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of uh, people swimming in the Amazon, local people, but uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, lots out there and yeah. some of them are huge too, uh, you know, uh, 15, 20 feet uh, All right. caimans. Probably yeah, there's a few to... species too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say it's probably similar to Australia, the kind of the closer to the salt water, the, the bigger they are and the more vicious. Yeah, I th we, I'd say think just big, big rivers. There's yeah. going to be things there for the fish. Right. Like big cat, you know, the I think there's plenty to eat. Yeah. Plenty to eat. Uh, and then certainly one of the things that uh, that all alligator crocodile species do is they they predate right at that edge between water and shore for uh, wading birds mm. or animals that come down to drink. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, problem we have sometimes the fishing is absolutely great on that was great on that Amazon program. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the most uh, concern I had is, is people trying to fish for crocodile <laughs> these like you know people that uh you're this desire to catch right. fish and then you see a crocodile there it's like well maybe i'll toss this bait over by the crocodile <laughs> and so i it's never really happened that we'd had a, a crocodile uh On the line. take a hook but right. uh, i've i've had to to keep supervising your duties pretty strong with a few students that I, I believe that was in there, you know, right. consistently trying to go fishing when they see crocodiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have yeah. to do any evacuations on the Amazon trips? Yeah. With yeah. And, uh, we, we did. And, and everyone was related to, uh, uh, some, some, uh, systemic, some small infection that then got systemic, wow. uh, and there's funguses and armpits. There's, uh, you know, there's the, if you don't take care with uh, these no seams, you know, you're essentially, if you want to stay healthy in the Amazon, you just have to have uh, pants and long sleeve shirt and really lightweight, like those liner socks, mm. perfect for keeping away um, no seams and oh. their bites. And they'll, those no seams, they're, bite itches so well you almost can't stop scratching oh. and then just imagine your 45 day trip scratching you do you you get pretty raw well yeah it's just uh hard to stay clean uh dirty fingernails scratching and the next thing you know you've got uh cuts mm. uh getting infected uh, and then th those things just go go significantly uh, infected uh, if you uh, if you leave them for a day yeah really that quick yeah 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 uh somebody one time uh, went barefoot they didn't got something in their foot and didn't uh let us know till a week or two later and they had this huge infection on the bottom of their heel and they also had to go and get a big uh it's like a half of a yeah, uh, I want to say like a, almost like a ping pong ball size uh, swelling on the bottom of their foot. And they had wow. to get a huge cavity cutting all that uh, out at a at a nursing station. Wow. Yeah. So most of the evacuations are probably happening by by some kind of a speedboat coming up to, to meet you or. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Wow. We'd flag a boat that, I mean, right in the middle of the Amazon, we just have to, we would, uh, uh, we had a list of contacts that we could have got someone, but, uh, we just, uh, our plan was uh, if we can get, uh, fast out 
uh, that right. ultimately could be as as quick, uh, if not quicker than as some sort of air support. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's some people, oh, as soon as you get to close to where there's some of these uh, uh, communities and ranches, they start to have these little water taxis. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I'd, uh, part of me, I, I just felt so privileged to be there with such a great group of uh, in, our instructor teams mm-hmm. there and the community of people we uh, we worked with was fantastic. Very privileged. I, I always felt I could have done that thing for free. Yeah. Just a, a, a lifetime of adventures in a 45 day trip. Yeah, it's unfortunate they they no longer run operations in in the Amazon anymore. Hey, what what was yeah, the main? Yeah. That was it more economics than anything, or was it uh, uh, was it your Puma or your Jaguar experience? No, no, we uh, got some good uh, uh, protocols and felt we could uh, control, you know, manage uh, those risks uh, through uh, these lessons and yeah, and even our uh, our uh, we would give it uh, like. Some, Typically for a winter course, before people go in the winter, uh, you'd have a, a cold injury slideshow and, and all that stuff. We'd do that for a, a tropical injury slideshow before people get into the field, just so that they're, uh, they're fully aware of uh, how to right. manage, how to prevent, you know, if you can prevent some of these things, wounds uh, and uh, daily baths. Uh, right. with antibacterial soap and health checks and the whole work. So, right. so that's what we were doing uh, in the, the Amazon uh, to just to manage the risk. Right. Mm-hmm. So it was more of the economics and, and that, that closed the branch. Yeah, there was a, uh, the, the hail is the currency uh, was uh, one of the, the big things that was harder to run uh, trips with uh, to make ends. Right. Meat and some of the distances were big. Yeah. Uh, right for uh, for gas, um, for uh, for buses, for renting mm-hmm. transportation. Uh, some of it was that, and then uh, I think after a, a few years, I'm not sure why, but uh, lots of things with uh, Knowles as word of mouth, and uh, it was a really hard semester to run uh, your amount of suffering, essentially just bugs in the heat. Right. And I would tell stories with uh, even Knowles instructor friends and people would stop and go, Jim, why would you work there? <laughs> but that's just here. It, it's just uh, the, the bugs, the, the conditions. But, you know, that people, uh, the same thing in winter, just uh, your, your discomfort. And the things you have to do to stay healthy is uh, different than a, a summertime course in the Rocky Mountains. Right. Uh, so yeah, there's just a lot of work to do. I don't know if some of it was word of mouth that things were just really hard. Uh, but um, those uh, students came off of that with a, a massive tool bag of, uh, of how to stay healthy in, yeah, in hot, humid places. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All yeah. right, Jim, I appreciate mm. your time. Before we uh, wrap up, and I, I know we'll get you on again. I know you're heading into the mm. field soon on your first trip in, in a while because of COVID. It's exciting. But uh, I'm going to finish off with a couple of kind of rapid fire questions, and you can give me your kind of your, your one, two word answers as, as they come by. Oh, yeah, just to sure. Find out a bit mm-hmm. more. So yeah. uh, if you had to lead one more trip in your lifetime, what location would it be? What's your favorite location to lead a trip? Um, the Amazon. I'd go yeah. back there in a heartbeat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Favorite piece of gear? A thermos. Yeah. Yeah. For your hot mm-hmm. chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not an Amazon. I didn't need a thermos for that Amazon. No. But uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, that- they, in the Amazon, it would be an umbrella. Ah. Or one of those uh, mosquito. Right. Mosquito uh, n- net jackets. Right. That. Uh, you can get in Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, best, best backcountry costume that you've seen on a course or wore yourself. Uh, my favorite is always uh, a pirate. Uh, yeah. to yeah. go to. I carry a, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I carry an eye patch, pirate oh, yeah. bandana, nice. pirate shirt, pirate flag. Of course, <laughs> it's ocean theme, right? That I'm right. going into. So uh, yeah. So that's that's uh. That's great. For yeah. for the folks who don't know, I, I mean by costume, I don't mean by your regular wear. Uh, Knowles and a lot of outdoor education courses are are famous for their uh, dress up parties and uh, we oh sure love to have yeah them. Uh-huh. yeah. So <laughs> what's that's your right. fa- what's your favorite backcountry meal right now? Uh. Uh, well, I, I uh, just, I love pasta. I, yeah, pasta. But uh, if I have time to cook, I'll make some calzones. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can't go wrong with yeah. those. What does the word adventure mean to you? A uh, level of uncertainty about the outcome, mm-hmm. what will actually happen on the course. Uh, Irregardless of the adrenaline, it's that sort of dealing with some of those unknowns. Uh, yeah, awesome. that's what keeps me uh, coming back. Could, this is the last one. If you could go back to any one location that you shared a hot drink with a uh, fellow instructor or student, what location would that be? Like a particular point, a particular spot? Some people think of a sunset or a sunrise or a view or a moment. Um, well, this, uh, um, we had some really nice times at this uh, instructor, Molly Doran. We did this scouting trip in uh, Malawi, uh, Namibia, Botswana. And uh, yeah, just uh, that coast, the skeleton coast with the dunes, mm. just uh waking up in the morning, uh, having a nice hot drink. Um, awesome. That area comes to mind. Yeah. Cool. That was a few years ago, I bet. Yeah. 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 Back in the late Mm eighties. Awesome. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, Jim, man, I thanks. Thank you so much for, for coming on and chatting with me and, uh, yeah. Will will I get you on again? Yeah. 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 I'm happy. It's nice. Uh, good, good. Uh, uh, yeah. Good, good to reminisce. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah, what this, yeah. that's what this podcast is going to be all about. I think it's going to be reminiscing and uh, well, mm-hmm. talking to some folks that are still out there and yeah, who knows what will happen on this course. You're starting a new course uh, in a few days uh, in Baja and uh, yeah, maybe we'll hit you up uh, in a few months once you, once you're back on uh, back in land and back in touch. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, Sean, yeah. it was great talking to you. Yeah, yeah. you too. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have a best. great course. Mm-hmm. Have a great day and, and we'll be in touch for sure. Okay. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. Right, thanks. Thanks. Sean. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.